good evening and uh, I'm going to have to ask you to mute this person because yeah. I am unable to do so. Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, good evening everybody and welcome once again um, to Saffron Seikat's voiceover talk show um, as we continue with our leading up to the first year anniversary. So we're still on our 12 week journey and we are so happy to have you here with us. Um, we are going to continue today. We were still looking at sustaining families and we started this um, last week. So we are going to be looking today at integrating our value and cultures within the safeguarding and the child protection systems. So our, our integrating our culture and values within the safeguarding and child protection systems. So that's basically looking at us as a people and our culture and our values and seeing how they interlock, intertwine with the safeguarding and the child protection systems within, obviously we're looking at the UK. So I know it's a, it's a long one. It's a bit of a long um, winded, but it, it makes sense, you know, um, what we at Saffron Seikap are basically saying is, you know, um, we are a community, the African community, the Caribbean community, and we do have a culture, we do have values. Um, and what we want to look at is how when we are raising our families, how when we are living with our families, how this is intertwined. But before we delve into that, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Giz Ojiako, and I am the director for programs for Saffron Seikap. Um, it's amazing to be back on Wednesdays. I, I love my Wednesdays because, you know, I get to come on and do what I love doing, which is building bridges within our community. Um, and alongside me, I have um, one of our special directors. I'm going to ask her to unmute and introduce herself. And as the program goes on, um, we shall be unveiling um, other, the rest of our directors. So Yemi, would you like to unmute and introduce yourself, please? I have unmuted and it is a lovely evening, everyone. Um, yes, this is my very self, Yemi Abulu Iyantari. And we are so pleasantly happy to have you all join us this evening. As we say, um, good afternoon. Good morning, somewhere in the world. Good evening, somewhere in the world. You're all welcome to our platform this evening. As usual, I will also be hosting uh, our Facebook um, handle. So please join me on Facebook. Say hello, because it's more. Say, give us a question, anything you want to talk about, anything you want us to talk about on, on the show, send the questions in and I will present it to Giz and to the rest of the team. Uh, aside from that, I just really want to say it's been a busy week for everyone. I don't know about you. It has been a very busy week for, for me. Probably I'm going to be shutting very quickly tonight, early to bed, early to rise as usual. And if you know me, you probably see me at 5 a.m. somewhere on some handle. <laughs> but hey, it is lovely to have everyone on board this evening. There are a few things that we're going to be talking about, things that are pertinent to our communities, especially around the safeguarding agenda. And the fact that, like I said, I, I believe a couple of weeks ago, which got a lot of people asking, why is that? So we thought we might as well address it. It's the fact that we have a very, very high representation. And in some um, book places, as we call it, in some editorials, social work editorials, books, there it is actually called an overrepresentation of the Black African children. And when you say Black African children, we mean all Black children be you from the Caribbean, be you from anywhere in Africa, or I don't know, an African from somewhere else in the world. We're, we're spread out now. So um, it's just that there's so many African children on 
the child protection system who come to the notice also of safeguarding. And as you know, uh, the safeguarding um, agenda or the safeguarding play comes before child protection. Child protection is the end of that journey. So it is really important that we start to catch it early or look at where the pitfalls are, where we fall in and see how we can try to start rectifying that. I know that a lot of it is due to awareness because we have a lot of parents who do not have an idea that the safeguarded agenda is actually even in place and say, what is safeguarding? So I suppose if you haven't come into contact with a safeguarding case or haven't been brought into that, that box, you probably wouldn't know that there is something called safeguarding. However, if you have a child in school, then is it that the school is not updating the parents about the safeguarding agenda? It's not updating the parents what is required or what they need to know so that their children do not come to the attention of the designated safeguarding officer or other office or uh, other teachers um, or staff within the school. So these are what we're going to be talking about this evening. It is very important that our children do not come into this remit because I don't know, and I know a lot of professionals would agree with me from everywhere that coming into that circle is not the best place for any child to be. Um, ultimately, some children get taken from their homes. Their children pick children on the um, children in need process. And that also is not where you want your child to be. I do not see any mother or any parent that would want to see their children you know, living away from them. Um, these are the things that we need to be discussing. So it is not a lecture. It is a case of, I have heard this happen to somebody. Please don't mention names. I'll leave that to, to Gay. So she does the, what's that? She, disclaimer. That's her word. And she does the disclaimer and she does it better than I do, unless you're in training with me and then I'll give it in a, in a different form but um it is very important that we hear cases out there and we try and understand what was the cause what could we have done better um so yes i'm going to hand over to gaze but in the and um i look forward to us having a very very interesting but hopefully life-changing discussions um this evening over to you gaze Thank you so much. And just in time, I would just would ask our other director who has just popped up. Marcia, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, everyone. Thank you for joining us again another week. Um, thank you for the usual people for your support. And we have a very tantalizing evening in store for you. Awesome. Thank you, Marcia. Um, and like we said, you know, um, we do ask that whatever you put forward today onto the platform and going forward, we always ask that we make it general. Um, please don't give names, do not give any specifics, um, because this is uh, obviously um, going viral. You are, on, you, are, you are on Facebook at the moment, and this is a Zoom link that we have shared far and wide. So therefore we do ask that any stories you would like us to hear, um, if we could code them so that you are not putting the real names um, of the participants in that story out um, in the virtual world, okay? Um, we do also ask that when we deliberate, if we can respect each other's opinions, um, because my right and your right might not be the same right. Okay, so let's just have a bit of respect um, how we deliberate. It's not a lecture, it's an open forum, feel free. You know, we don't sit on the fence, Saffron Seca, we wanna say it as it is, because the only way we can help you is when we hear the story 
and then we can signpost you to wherever you need to be signposted and and get you the the, the, the help that you 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 would you require um so we're hoping we're going to have a very interactive session this evening um it's going to be it's like one of my favorite because i love discussing our culture i love discussing our values because we do as a people we do have a culture um um, so before we go ahead, because what we're looking at is how we can bring out the culture and the values of us as a people, um, you, we have to understand what is the culture, what are the values. Um, and I know without, like we said, I, I, I don't want to lecture anybody, but it's very basic, it's very simple, you know. I am of obviously Nigerian heritage, okay, so I consider myself a Nigerian. Um, so I have a culture. You know, I have somewhere where I've come from, okay, and where I've come from, um, there were, is, there was a way that I was raised, you know, um, and the, the, the culture that I was, you, you, you know, used to <clears throat> coming in to the United Kingdom, obviously there were some disparities or things that I was seeing here that did not obtain where I grew up, right, is it right, is it wrong? It's not, a, it's not, that's not what we're talking about. The cultures are just very different. The point is that there is a culture. We do have a culture. And what we're trying to say today is in our families, in our homes, and we are, we are basically looking at the African and the Caribbean homes, okay? Because we have very similar cultures. We are intertwined as everybody knows, if you do your history. Um, so yes. When we're looking at those homes and we know there's a culture um any of you that are sitting out there you, you know i'm gonna throw this out how many of you as young young children and even now not even as young children even now if your parents are still alive because some of us our parents have passed on but even now how many of us could walk into the would wake up in the morning get out of your bed go down to the kitchen to get a cup of tea and pass your mother. Let's leave the father, pass your mother on the way and not greet her. <laughs> I can assure you, yeah, <laughs> that it's not a spoon because our parents were like that. I can assure you that you would not get away with it. Why would you not get away with it? Because the, the culture states when you see your elder, Forget the fact that she's even your mother, because that might not have been your mother. It could have just been an elder that was in the house at the time. It is a, what we call a, the, the, the prerequisite for you to even get into that room is good morning. That's your visa. That's your pass, right? Um, you know, the, I'm going, I'm, I'm going out, mum. No, we didn't used to tell our parents where we were going. We used to ask, can we go? <laughs> yeah so you see these are just i mean we can laugh at them now because things have really 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 changed but these are some of the cultures that we talk about okay um and then when you come into a society where such does not obtain and you're trying to raise your child within those confinements the culture that you were used to we have the conflict and as a result of that conflict, what do you have? You have a situation, yes, that will lead you to get a, a referral because there could be, sometimes these conflicts are heated, you know, whether we like it or not. Sometimes, So you see, why, why I started with that is because of, there is a culture. Um, and like we said, if there is anybody on here, um, we wanna hear from, teachers we want to hear from social workers the oh I, i'm going to i'm going to please um ask for a pardon facebook family i didn't even mention you this evening and i and i and i do and i do apologize um so welcome and the reason i've remembered you now is because a lot of you zoom in from nigeria so on behalf of saffron please accept my apology you are welcome you're always there you guys are always giving us fire and and you know um it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't nice to have um overlooked you so we're sorry but yeah facebook family please you know like, like yemi said um you know give her some fire her as much as you can it will get to me what we want to do is want to hear um 
I'm, I'm hoping that there are not just Africans on tonight because mm. it would be amazing to hear from every other culture. And I'll tell you why. There is a very high representation of children um, from our communities, like you said. Um, and we want to understand, you know, how we can get the, the system to understand that there is a culture, we have our values. Um, but I think mainly, you know, we, we said this last week and when we were talking about, you know, families, we were talking about last week, we were talking about the, the male role model and we, we were focusing on, you know, the absenteeism and it's not just physical absenteeism, but sometimes the, 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 the male, male being there, but still not engaging. So that made them absent. Now we're talking about, you know, in the family, right? What, what values and what, what culture is playing out that is causing the conflict, yeah? Um, that is now leading our children into the system. Are we getting things wrong? Is it lack of awareness? You know, there's something that is, and we, so what we want to do now, we want to be able to do two things. We want to be, we want to be able to make the system understand that we have a culture and values. And we also want to make our families understand that there is a system that obtains. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass us over to our safeguarding queen because anything you want to know about safeguarding, it's Yemi. Yemi has, I would say, uh, almost, I've known her 21 years, 20 something year um, professional um, um, entanglement with safeguarding and child protection. Yemi, there's a question I want to throw to you. Mm. And I'm throwing this to you first because of your background. Um, obviously your Nigerian heritage like me so you will understand two sides of the coin but you've also been in this country for very long because of your expertise with child protection and safeguarding can you help us to make us understand the fact that we have the culture and the, the, the values that we're talking about then we have this system can you help us to understand um, how the two are how they th there are parallels at the moment and obviously we're trying to see how we can integrate. So can you please explain, because there may be people on here that don't understand safeguarding and don't understand child protection. So I'm gonna hand it over to you now. I know I've thrown you on the spot, but you, you understand there's nobody here that can give us the nuggets that we need. And then after that, I will ask Marcia to chip in because obviously you and Marcia have worked in that field, if that's okay with you. Over to you. Okay. Um, well, where do I start? For the fact that um, I don't know how many people know, and we've had this lecture, so I, and I don't want to put it as a lecture, but we all, all know the reason why we changed the way we worked in, in social care or the way social care works. So I don't work directly inside social care anymore, but um, the way social care worked very many years ago was directly at child protection directly when the harm has happened to the child we're going in we're going to go and try and support family um, in cases where we need to get the police involved um, we have a joint investigation or we uh, or the child has to be taken away from from the home and it came to the fact that we had Victoria Columbia, and I will say, please, there is nothing I can really tell you right now in this that you would not learn by taking time out to read online, just Google Victoria Columbia. Obviously, we um, a lot of people know that Victoria was brought by her uncle by, by her auntie and uncle into the united kingdom from france from africa then into france and then into the united kingdom a lot of the understanding around the fact that she was in the uk was because of the support that the welfare system could also give her to 
to supposedly bring up um, Victoria properly education wise and everything. However, that didn't happen and she abused Victoria in so many ways, physically, um, cigarette burns, um, beatings. She was in the bath for so many days, cold bath in a black bag. She had to be, um, you know, using, putting her waist in there. And ultimately, um, Victoria died of injuries to her person. Sadly, when Victoria's autopsy and investigation came out, we, within the safeguarding child protection system, when a child dies uh, or suffers significant harm, serious harm, we have what we call the um, serious case review. And Victoria's serious case review highlighted, I believe, and I keep forgetting exactly how, how many, but at least 112 or 122 injuries. Please feel free to unmute yourself, Giz. Um, it was 122. 122. Yes injuries and um it's just there were so many times that victoria came into the you know the view of professionals who could have helped her so she was in school and many times she didn't present in school the school could have at some time you know reach out to 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 um her auntie or her uncle to say why isn't she in school but they didn't. Um, her GP as well saw her a few times. Now, why I'm starting from Victoria, apart from the fact that you need to understand the agenda, is also because our faith, our culture was a big part in um, the failings for Victoria. Victoria had cigarette burns on her scalp. But when the um, doctor interrogated that, her auntie actually said it was um, dry scalp. So like, and she basically was like, oh, Africans, we have very dry scalp. We have, and I'm going to use the word we use in, in Nigeria. And I don't, I don't know if you know the word. I'm sure you have the word in, in Igbo, Giz. And I'm sure Michael knows the word I'm going to say. And it is lapa lapa. Is that what you call it? Cro -cro. Yeah, when it's dry. ah, okay, yes. I thought you had a different word because we we know we all know the word cro -cro now. Possibly, but that's the one I know. It's it's, it's exactly. associated with dry dry yeah. skin. So she she said it was it was that that it was just basically what every African um child or many African children had. So that was one culture then you're looking at the fact that um, the, the doctor not being wiser, hence now the, one of the recommendations that came from that was um, cultural competence. So that a lot of professionals who work with African children need to understand the culture, need to understand or even know, okay, if someone presents us, says this, do you <coughs> Why don't you ask for the questions? Why don't you ask some, some African organization or an African doctor to have a look for you and give mm -hmm. you your second, second opinion? These are the things that we need to be, we're going to, we do differently now. But looking at the, at the failings around Victoria, everyone around failed Victoria. There was nobody who picked up um, and could have saved that young girl from, from the horrible death that she suffered. Now that is the basis of the safeguarding agenda. And then came baby Peter, and I know a lot of you remember baby P because it was a, it was all over the news, baby P this and baby P that, and that same child. And then looking at it now, you know, you think, oh, it's all about African children. No, baby Peter was a blue eyed, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful boy. Um, but there was feelings around baby P as well. Uh, he's, I, I know, cause I've written so much about it and he's, he's his mom's boyfriend 
the violence against maybe P leaving him in his push chair. I don't know, maybe all day without cleaning him. Eventually, and um, uh, check, I'll check this, but he had broken bones that were not even identified by the doctor. So these, um, and it's many times, you know, that's why when, when um, a doctor sees your child now, they literally pick up your child. And because if they had picked up that child, it probably would have, you know, seen something and been able to help him. We're not lecturing. I'm just giving you a a template for us to work on this this evening. So looking at that, there have been failings around these children. Their serious case reviews identified this, but most essentially is that these reviews then were um, investigated by Lord Lemon. Lord Lemon looked at the way we worked, how it affected the children adversely, positively in every way, and came up with the fact that all of these things could have been prevented. Hence, he then put forward the safeguarding agenda, which is, or which are, preventative measures that we put in place to avoid serious harm to children, serious violence to children, and ultimately death, which is which is even the, the worst that we don't want. So now we have set the, the course for the safeguarding agenda. Safeguarding is everybody's business. Safeguarding is everywhere. <sighs> I, I know that we we've, we're still doing a lot of work um, in in Nigeria, putting the safeguarding agenda. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Michael. It's ring warm scar. Yes, la ring warm scar. Thank you, Michael. Um, we're still doing a lot of work in Nigeria, pushing forward the safeguarding agenda, because just like we used to do here many 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 moons ago, um. I've termed it firefighting, you know, the fire, there's a fire and you go in, you rescue the child, you, you rescue the family if you, if you can, and, and then you go away and, and then it continues. But why do we have to go in and firefight when we can prevent that fire from burning, from harming people? And that's the way I personally see the safeguarding agenda working. So safeguarding is embedded in everything we do in the UK. If your child is going to school, please go and ask for their safeguarding statement, their safeguarding policy procedures, because they should have it put up somewhere or be able to hand you a booklet, a leaflet, explaining to you as a parent what is required with the safeguarding of the children in the school. Because when you drop your child in school, you're, you have a confidence that that child is safe in that school. What gives you the confidence? How can you confidently pick up your child from home and just drop that child and go away to work, go away to do whatever you need to do, but you're very confident that that child is safe in the school? If you haven't, parents, please, you need to um, be asking your schools what their provision is for the safeguarding of your child or children. Okay, so we're looking at our cultures. How do they interplay with the safeguarding agenda? Marcia, please feel free to unmute yourself. I see that you're available. I am definitely not giving a basic basic introduction to safeguarding this evening. So how does our culture integrate with safeguarding? If I were to be blunt, hmm. and talk about our culture, I would say our culture can conflict with safeguarding. Absolutely. If we look at how we were brought up in the Caribbean, in Africa, our parents didn't know anything about safeguarding. Hmm. They had no idea of safeguarding. As far as they were concerned, they educated us they fed us and they put a roof over our heads. Bam. That was it. 
that's all they knew. Anything that happened in between was what got us where we are today, unfortunately. But that's how it was. So the beatings, they were mm. considered standard. Yeah. You know, the emotional abuse, that was considered standard. And when I say emotional abuse, it's like the education way it was, you had to learn, you had to learn, you had to learn, you had to learn. Mm. I want you to be an accountant and no matter what you say or do, you're going to be an accountant. That was standard. <laughs> yes. yes. The, in terms of, okay, today's Sunday, you're going to church. Yeah. Whether you want to go to church or not, you are going yeah. to church. <laughs> you're going. Whether you're seven or 70, if you're, you're living under my roof, you're going to church. As far as rights, we had no rights. Our parents was always right. Mm -hmm. So you didn't question. You didn't argue. You didn't defend. You just did. And as far as they were concerned, that's how they were bringing us up. Yeah. Yes. They brought us up the way they were brought up. We talk in culture. We talk in tradition. Yes. Yeah. They only gave what they got. Exactly. They didn't know any better. Sure. Yes. So that is why in this time of this 21st century, however, some of our parents, and even not even our parents, some people still struggle mm -hmm. with safeguarding because yeah. they don't understand you can't smack a kid. They don't understand that every child has a right. They don't understand when we say discuss with the children. Because you can tell my mom reason with your with her children. You think, no, there's one woman in this house. Not many, not two. So, so I still think we still struggle. And that's the reason why you have saffron. Because some people still can't understand why safeguarding is there. And why certain things they can't do. They will still tell you that's how we do it in the Caribbean. That's how we do it in Africa. Yeah. Why can't we do it? They still tell you. As far as they're concerned, the children are their property. So whatever they want to do with their kids, they do. But unfortunately, we have to abide by the laws. Mm -hmm. Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. Safeguarding is everyone's business. And every child matters and every child has a right. It doesn't mean that you still can't instill our culture in our children. Yeah. But it's the, there's a way. And that's why it's important that we are educated in how you do that. And as Gis said earlier, you wake up in the morning, you come downstairs, it's good morning. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You come downstairs and your mom is sitting there and you don't say good morning. There's a shoe in your head. <clears throat> you won't even see it coming. <laughs> see, that to, that was discipline. That was safeguarding as far as they're concerned because they're, safe, <laughs> they're safeguarding your future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so oh, yes, I still think, and I know in the UK, of course, this... I can't say it doesn't happen, but it shouldn't happen. But I know in some parts of the Caribbean and Africa, there is still this sort of thing happening. And that's why it's important that we reach out to everyone to educate you. We're not brainwashing you, not preaching to you. It's education. So you can live within the law. You can bring up healthy, well-adjusted children within the law and still instill culture and values. Awesome. 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 Do awesome. you know what? Marcia, you picked on something that, and I I know that a lot of people don't want to, um, you know, um, hear it sometimes, but while you sit in, I know you know this, Marcia, but when you sit in the places that we've, we've, we've worked in, there are trends. You tend to see, okay, with um, African families, these, these are the things that stick out. These are the cases that tend to come to our, our face. The very, very, very thing that stands out everywhere is that wooden spoon, you know? 
um <laughs> you you get yes, you get yes. that wooden spoon and you know what has what has transpired and you know nobody says that you can't discipline your child the the the, the question is what is discipline to you does it have to be inflicting pain physical pain on another person human being um would you do it i i know that marcia would not be would not be hitting me because you probably will be receiving one back but that child that you're hitting cannot cannot hit you back and that is where the problem starts to 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 to, to come so when because a, a child cannot hit you back you have this domination over the child it's the shift of power you have a sense you have a power over the child and i know that when we were growing up it's um we we have a lot to talk about respect and fear how do you balance that does a child fearing you mean the child respects you <laughs> no, it just means that the child has not dropped off enough confidence, is not old enough to be able to hit back and tell you exactly what they think. The fear is because they've been subdued. Yes. It, it, the, the, you, and our, our parents actually think it is respect. It is not respect because if you could read that child's mind, your hand will freeze in the air. Okay, I think Sorry. what comes to mind when you say about respect and fear, um, I know I used to hear quite a lot um, in my home, and that was respect is reciprocal. Okay, and I, and I've always said, and and you know, I don't want I don't want anybody listening to this today to think for one second that we are saying, do not discipline the children because it's one it's biblical these kids need to be disciplined um but i think what we're trying to say is the methodology is what we need to we need to look into the methodology um and i don't think there's anybody that sat here that is gonna you know can sit here and be innocent and say you know oh i've never smacked my child Tony Blair, when he was the Labour Prime Minister, came out and said, I smacked my child. And that was when they were trying to stop, you know, smacking. I was in this country when we used to get the cane. My set was the last set, um, 83 it was. We were the last set in secondary school that were flogged with the cane. OK, um, so you can see how far we've gone. Um, like you both rightly said, I want to take us back a bit, Yemi, to where you talked about Victoria Columba and the reason for her coming here. I just read a bit of the report before coming on air, and there was a main reason this child was being brought to this country. Okay. And it uh, was... Go ahead. No, go on. Okay. And it, it, from what I... It seemed like she was the... Oh, God rest her soul, because she died, she was, she was eight years old, so this is very difficult. But the point of the matter is, she was brought here so that they would use the system, yes, mm -hmm. to gain, it, it was a monetary, it was all about what they could gain. So this yeah. lovely child whose parents were alive, but they, in their head, it was, we want a better child. Uh, opportunities for our daughter so they did it out of love yeah. you know unfortunately it you know it didn't transpire now the reason i'm harping on this is because of this right how many families in the united kingdom have children in their homes who are not their biological children who have been brought here you know for want of better education you know we've, we we all have high hopes for our kids mm -hmm. And um, you're probably not getting the X, Y, Z you thought you were going to get from the system for these children. So what do you do? Every little thing is a problem. That child becomes the problem. Yeah. So yeah. when you can't pay your bill, it's the child's problem. 
when there's not enough money coming in, it's the child's problem. And how do you solve that? You know, you take things away from the child. You know, you have kids that are going to school unfed. You have kids that are leaving homes that have food in the homes, but as a means of, am I gonna call that punishment? Um, you don't feed these children and these kids, you, you don't, you don't, they don't look dressed well. Now, Cinderella's law is real. Um, Cinderella's law, does, can anybody help me? Cinderella's law, do we have a date? Cinderella's law, it, it's not that old, okay? Cinder, I will get the date before we go off air. Cinderella's law came out. I'm not sure if that was with, after, after baby P, there was another, we, can you believe guys, we've had Victoria Columbia, we had baby P. After baby P, we still had Pelka, the little uh, Polish boy, okay? Yeah. So, you see what, what we're saying is, within our community, yeah? We, we, we come from a culture of loving children. So this whole idea now that we have so many of our children you know, as such a high representation in the child protection system, why it's a worry for me is because our culture, our culture reverence culture children. Our children are, are everything to us in our culture. Okay. I think, what, 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 I'm sorry, Yem, I'm not I got close. It. I got so, it. So I, what I'm going to ask everybody to do is to think of what I just said, yeah? We have to think of the methodology. Nobody is saying, come to this country and forget your culture. No. The United Kingdom, there's a culture here. If you go back in history to the Victorian times, there's a culture here. Modernization is, is whittling it down, but there is a culture. There is, there is a serious culture. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I visited a village in Baldodoc, the last, last village on the A12. And I visited a family. And this guy was a... Excuse me? Sorry. <laughs> she said she'd last, last I, village. I'm like, what? Yes, village. what, what village. And guess what? They, was, they were using gas. They were using gas. It's a lovely family. They grew everything. And the children were very excited because I came from London very excited um and the point i'm trying to make is when i looked at that family it reminded me of a traditional family back home in the village these kids were respectful they were you know they didn't they didn't even have mobile phones and this is about maybe i'm going back maybe 15 years ago and we did have mobile phones in the united kingdom so they have a culture so nobody's telling us to get rid of our culture nobody but what I think we need to start doing is, and another thing, and Yemi and, and um, Masia, I'm going to throw the second thing to you when I finish. Um, so basically what I'm saying now is we need to think about, you know, how are we doing the discipline? Um, I, if you pummel a child, do you think that child is going to be any better after that beating? I'm going to be honest with you. They are not. What we, what we are basically doing is raising monsters because if you continue to bash a child in the, in the, in the realm of self-discipline, that child is going to internalize. And children are very good at internalizing. And then you have mental health to deal with later, which you probably won't be able to deal with. And then you're going to have violent children lashing out, which you're gonna think, why is this child, you know, so you, we've got to think of these, 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 this, we've got to think of what happens to that child later. So Yemi and, and, and Marcia, and the reason I keep throwing to you guys, because you all know that you guys, your, your safeguarding is off the chain. I can't even compete with that. We, you, you mentioned cultural competency, Yemi. Now, we've been harping on, you know, the, the family should understand the culture that they know and understand the methodology to use in that culture where we are in the UK. Okay, what of the system? Should the system not understand that these people have a culture? Yeah. So yes, the learning, the learning, should it not be from both ends? 
you know the word learning is both ways so you learn from the learner the learner learns from the other so okay. it is it is it is um hence like i said it was a it is now and it was a recommendation lord Lehman put down at that people and i just want to just want to say social workers <laughs> because they do such a great job practitioners people who work with children people who work with families need to know to learn you know the ways the cultures the the values of those families um before we we actually make decisions you know when 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 a a, a um a case safeguarding case comes about we have assessments so within that assessment there has to be a a gleaning of understanding how that family actually works what are the you know the everyday lives of this family what are the, the things that tick in this family what are they do's what are the don'ts you know there this this assessment is actually quite um robust and within that we learn so much about the family but i believe that there are still some aspects of those that are different is understanding why those families do certain things you you started on the fact that our culture is actually a lot of what our parents did or continue to do is out of love yeah. and out That's of wanting right. the best for that child right. exactly victoria's mom wanted the best for her she yeah. let her go with someone who she thought would look after her would would get her to where she could get better education um be able to give back to society be able to give back to the to the mom that's those are um, some of the um objectives of the safeguarding agenda which is safety health um enjoying leisure activities so like children get to play children yeah, get yeah. to be themselves um contributing back to society economic wise yeah, yeah. as well mm -hmm. and this, this these are the bases of the african family so where is it that they you, you then come to the uk or even within africa where is that boundary where the love ends and the frustration creeps in and the you're not um it looks like i'm wasting my money on you sending you to to good schools and where then does the physical abuse then come in so it it is the punishment we i i, I know that i wouldn't even mention how many what type, what different types of punishment we have all had to to go 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 through but within um our parenting skills and our and understanding our parenting um portfolios and abilities how do we where is that line between violence punishment and discipline let and me I come in yeah. yeah um you said something which um hit the nail on the head when it comes to um corporal punishment or discipline physical punishment frustration frustration you said where the love where the where, where did love stop love ne they never stop loving we never stop loving the kids our parents never stop loving them but it's the frustration they get frustrated with various things in life and they lose that ability to reason to see reason and they do the first thing that they know which they had is to lash out, lash out. Lash out. It's lashing out. And Giz, you said something earlier. Mm -hmm. If that sort of treatment actually was effective, well, why we carried it on all through our childhood? Hmm. But we, we, our parents never learned because yeah. that's all they knew. Yeah. Which is the interesting thing about it. Have you noticed? So our parents were really strict with us. Look at our parents now with our children. They're not it's a different <laughs> story. Very different because they have now learned. Learned. They're learning from us, and they're learning from the system. Okay. 
I'm still going to, it looks like I'm really harping on the two of you today, but I, I, I am going to do that. For anybody that's watching now and they're hearing everything we've said today, right? And remember, we're focusing on how we can integrate our culture and values with the system, okay? So, you know, we could have people watching who are in the system, um, who are being threatened with getting into the system. So hopefully mm -hmm. this will be a good session for them. What, what advice or what tips can you give to families? Yeah? Out there now who, let's imagine, let me give you a scenario. So we've got uh, a family, mother works, father works, um, and they, they're very fond of leaving their ch underage children unmanned that's a common one because we what, another thing we're going to have to do is look at what are the triggers that lead these children to the to the child protection to safeguarding it so um what before you before we we list the triggers um what advice could you give to to families because families will be listening in what advice as people who have sat in safeguarding and child protection meetings, so you've heard the real meat, you've sat on these tables, what advice can you give to parents or what, what message can you give out there to parents to say, don't or do? Because it's not just about what they shouldn't do, it's also about what they should do. So if one of you can please um, help us. Okay. Thank you, Yemi. Um, you know, let, let's start from what parents should do. Get involved more. Ask more questions. Um, like I said, I stated earlier on when we started um, putting down a, a basis for this discussion today, was that parents go into schools and you are happy to leave your children, but you've not asked your school, how safe is my child? Forget that you don't even know the safeguarding agenda is there. Have you been able to ask them or when you're, you know, signing those papers, oh, your, your child has been um, accepted in this mm -hmm. school and so on and so on. Do you read the, the papers that are given to you apart from the, <laughs> I have signed, let me look at the <laughs> uniforms. When, when does she start, you know? Um, uh, do you read? Because I know that there is now legally by law, schools have to give you all of these things. Many yes, times yes. we take these documents and we have just filed them somewhere. What we're concentrating on is the uniform and it's, oh, no, you can't wear short skirts. No, the skirt's too short and um, and and all of those things. And the mm -hmm. hair, can you wear earrings? You know, earrings. Those are the least important things. You need to be reading those papers that are given you. Those are the law um, put down of in your engagement with the school. Engage with PTAs, engage with the teachers. You know, a lot of these teachers are very, very widely trained, especially in the UK. To um, And that's why we have now this safeguarding, um, I don't know, are they called hubs in schools? Yeah. So, your safeguarding starts being assessed in school first before it um, it then goes to to a referral and into social care. So a lot of these teachers are very, very vastly trained and they will pick out something very quickly. Why don't you start to read and understand what are the triggers? What are these things that then um, brings the attention of the teacher to your child? We need to enlighten ourselves, you know, um, when when you come from another country into this country, you know, um, what's, what's that saying? Um, um, when you're in Rome, you do like, the, you Romans. like the Romans, you find out how the Romans behave, you know, um, you look at their ways, what they eat. Can you eat their food? Can you not eat their food? Okay, where can you walk? Where don't you go at night? And I think a lot of us know those rules anyway. You know where you wouldn't go at night. You know what would or who or what would accost you there. So why don't you put that same logic and that same principle into um, just even your child being accepted into school? 
these are very important. Um, we we have our parenting um um what do you call it a parenting hub uh every every other Saturday, and a lot of parents I've heard say, ah, well, are, you, are you teaching us how to parent our children? And I'm like, no, we're not. It's actually a mutual discussion because we 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 will we will give examples of even what we have but I had to go through as parents, and it's a discussion and. We look at the laws that are available in the land. In the land, we look at the, the things that are available for parents to tap into, for your children also to tap into. Oh, there's so much. There is. I don't see. You know, we've we've looked at you know um, safeguarding in Australia, in so many countries. Because um, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Our social worker is in the house. <laughs> Welcome, sis. But we've looked at. Um, so many around the world, and I will tell you that the UK has very, very, very robust safeguarding and child protection support, and and um and provision all around. There's so much around, but I I, I think that a lot of parents, and I'm not mentioning from where, but we have a tunnel vision, and we're just seeing, you know, awards, success, you passed, you had an A. There's so many things that come within that you had an A. Before the child can achieve that, the child has to be grounded in where they're happy. They they can thrive in an environment where everything around them works. So um, it is a learning process and it is for everyone. There is no book. I have not seen with, with all the knowledge that is out there and all the professors and all the PhDs and all the dissertations all around, there is no book for parenting even if you do write a parenting book i'm telling you there is no book for parenting it's all experience um that's been put together from all sources and put into the book tomorrow something else will come that has not been addressed so um it's parents uh professionals getting to talk together see this forum is one if we can get more parents to come, we can hear more questions, we can give more advice and support, we can learn. Is that how? We didn't know that. Even as professionals, we didn't know that. Please teach us. You know, teach us, let us know the 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 the, the stumbling blocks that hinder some things being being done properly. Yeah. Yeah, mm, Mars. Just, yeah just add something. Um with our African and Caribbean ways. You know mm. what our problem is? Mm. Culture and tradition. Yeah. We don't differentiate between culture and tradition. And culture faith. And faith. So culture is the way you do things, how we do it, the way to do it. Traditional things that's been handed down. And that's what I was saying earlier. Our parents did it the way it was handed down to them. So what we need to focus on is educating about that area. Because as we said earlier, we're not saying you can't instill culture into the kids because it's the same thing. Good morning, good evening, good night. Thank you very much. You know, that, that's culture. We're not saying don't take that. It's the traditional things that we are handed, that was handed down to us that we continue to do. Hmm. Everyone's got culture and we've got a very rich culture. I mean, I mean, we know how we were brought up in terms of we're talking about, we have this saying back home, I'm not sure if it's the same in Africa, manners and behavior will take you right through the world. And that's, that's basically the West Indian way of saying, we instill this culture in you and you got to, you know, so the good morning, the good evening, the good night, the thank you very much, the auntie, the uncle, anyone who's older than you, that's culture. Respect. Yes. So the tradition is what our people use as well this is the way I was brought up so this is all I know how else can I get the child to learn if I don't beat the child hmm. you know how hmm. else can I get my return on investment all the money I send you to school if I don't <laughs> drum the books into you you know it's tradition and so as you said earlier, it, education is the key it's yes. education we're not saying dilute what we do no. in terms of our culture no, it's educating. 
And as you say, we have in the UK, we have one of the best social care systems. And yes, there are parenting classes and our social health and social care workers are trained to understand various cultures. It's not a one size fit all. It's yeah. Not. So the understanding is there. Okay. It's also about our parents engaging, as you said, Yemi. Yeah. You, you find a good school and you're done with that. That's, that's me done. You go to that's school, it. I buy your uniform, you got your books and I'm done with you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the engagement. So over to our resident social worker. Yes, Sister Adebola, you're definitely unmuting yourself. Good evening. Welcome. It's lovely to have you. I'm going to ask you to unmute. We need you to lend your voice to this topic because um, I, I saw you sneak in. Don't worry, but I will recap for you. Um, we're basically, you, you, you've seen, you know the topic. We basically want to hear from you because we know that this is something you live every day. And we're trying to see how we can integrate our values and culture um, with the safeguarding and child protection system. Um, so there's been a lot that we've said today, but we're basically, it, it would be amazing to have your take on it, sis. All right. <laughs> Hi. 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 Good to see you. <laughs> it's nice to see you too. Um, I think um, I, I was just picking up on what um, uh, Yemi and Marcia were saying about um, uh, the differences in, in and culture and uh, the values. I know that when we were growing up, um, it often was said that if you didn't learn at home, they would teach you outside. And mm -hmm. obviously, you cannot in call, which means if you're not taught at home, you'll be taught outside and people out there will teach you. And I think that's really very profound. It's always stayed with me in terms of being a parent or a child to teach them with the right cultures and, and things like that. But I think Marcia is right. We have in the United Kingdom, one of the best um, social care system um, and is a welfare state and it runs really well on welfare. And, um, and they're doing a fantastic job in terms of trying to incorporate um, uh, those trainings and those teachings into what goes on. I'm gonna just quickly talk about something that is very passionate with me, which is um, the recent um, uh, disappearance of the uh, of the young boy uh, from the yeah. African uh, background, and and I think what's really apparent in that case is a lack of understanding um, the police have about the sickle cell anemia, which is what affects Black African and Caribbean. Uh, more. Mm -hmm. I think if it was, uh, I'm, I'm not even talking out of line, if it was um, an illness like cerebral palsy that is well known, they probably would have taken those complaints more seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that we have. I think we will, and that's why we need Saffron, and that's why we're here, is to bridge that gap, because I actually don't think uh, people know those culture uh, that are working in social care or the police service or the teaching uh, education system. I think there's still a gap that is missing. And I think that gap needs to be covered by education because the more educated people are on other people's culture, uh, the better. I would not go into, as a social worker, if I go into a Muslim um, background, I know how I have to take off my shoes. I'm not even going to be told before I do that. And that's why I would always make sure that I have my socks on because I know that when I get there, I've got to take off my shoes. I've got to understand that. I'm not going to look at the avoidance of a Muslim man looking at me in the eyes as the fact that he's hiding something. It's very much cultural. The women don't look at men in the, in the eyes and they don't have face con uh, eye contact. So I wouldn't look at that. And you know, there's so many other things that are different in cultures and and needs to be, uh, you know, taken on by by professionals in terms of the differences. However, what I also want to say is that with African background, my take on it is, you know, the system is there to be supportive, and sometimes we see the system as working against us. So we're trying to cover up our tracks, and and one lie leads to another lie, and the mm -hmm. lie builds up, and before you know it, you found yourself in a big pit, 
and you can't get out of it. And that's often what happens is, is a simple situation uh, that is very common with us. We've, well, I come from Nigeria and I know that when I came to the United Kingdom, I had expectation of what I wanted to do. And there's so much frustration when you don't, when those expectations are not met and you get constant calls from people back home that think the apple tree behind your house is money and you're making pounds and you should just send those pounds home. So if a child comes home in that kind of background where the economic situation is bad and has just not done their assignment, mom is not beating that child based on the assignment. Mom is beating that child based on everything she's going through, all the frustration. So the beating that child would get is more than the assignment. It's not so much, the assignment is, is a big deal to us, obviously, but the, the accumulation of those factors, and that's why when social workers go into family homes, experienced social workers, they are looking at all of those factors and trying to see how can, this okay. has affected them. And for us, a big factor for us is the responsibilities that we have back home, which we all have, you know, and, and we, because that's how we were brought up. Uh, the constant prayer my mom used to make for me, she's um, late now, is that, you know, uh, my children will look after me just as I've looked after her. Because that's, that's what it is. We have responsibility. And it's about understanding that, that the culture, you know, goes beyond everything that is seen on the face value. And the more professionals have an understanding of that, the better they're able to work with families. I, I, I worked recently with a, a, a Nigerian family and, um, and I have to say that the child did reveal that mom smacked uh, at school and mom denied it. And I went to see mom and I said, you know what? I said, I, I, I can get why this was done, but children don't lie. And the fact that she's saying that you've done it, it means that something has happened because she wouldn't just come up with that kind of um, um, situation. And mom obviously it eventually admitted and, and then I said to her, you know, just go for some parenting classes just to understand the strategies of, of managing some of those behaviors with, with your child. And, and it was amazing. I need to raise this because the school had raised an, uh, a concern that, mom, that the children, um, they think they were doing too many schoolwork at home because the children, so when I have the children, the children didn't have that. They said they, they, they had a balanced life, but it's very, very um, amazing how people can be judgmental based on what they know of the culture as well. That, oh yeah, they're giving them too much work. Actually, um, it's all right for you to have expectation and, uh, of your children. I, I, I have of my daughter and, and she's doing well on my son, but, but what we need to understand is not over exerting that pressure, which is what we need some education on. Because one of the key things about children is when they catch the vision, they run, they run with, with it. it. Yeah. They run with it. Yeah. But when they don't, then you're 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 fighting a losing battle. And it's just getting that balance and, and that understanding. That's my view. Brilliant. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for that, um, Adibala. I just want to go to our Facebook family. Um, I have some I don't know their, their statements, but um, I will take this one. It says this narrative makes one think this parenting, that parenting is more robust and effective in the Western world. OK, that's a question. Does that mean? Are yeah, so is it a comment? Is it a it, question? It's a, it's a, she, the, the person has just put in a comment. This narrative makes one think that parenting is more robust and effective in the Western world. Not at all. There you go. Brilliant. And if you want to expand, it would be nice. Maybe that's how it's come across to her because of yes. perception is different. Yes. It would be nice if we can, you know, help this person. I think it goes back to what Yemi said earlier. Yeah. When, it, when in Rome. Do yeah. as the Romans do. Do as the Romans. Yeah. And so if you have your safeguarding policy says you do this, we live by the safeguarding policy. Yeah. At yes. the same time, we raise our children. Yeah. So it doesn't mean in the Western world it's more effective nope. because we have the same delinquent children in the Western world and we have in the rest of the world. Yeah. We have the same delinquent parents in the Western world and we have in the other world. Good. It's about us as parents engaging, taking on the education that's there. 
around safeguarding. So no, it's not more effective Brilliant. at all. And, and can I also add, it's not just about us taking on what is there. You know, as a parent, you can also question mm -hmm. what is being thrown at you or your child in a very firm, um, in a very assertive um, way and I, and I, and I'll, and I'll, and let me just expand on that a bit more and I'll tell you why because I remember a situation in a school um, and the, the this child was going from nursery into primary school so this child was visited in the nursery and the first thing that this the teacher said to this child was oh just know that your hair you won't be able to take that hair into the school. Now, what was the hair? This child had braided hair, which is what most um, Africans and Caribbeans do. They braid the children's hair because it's, it's easier to manage. Mm -hmm. So the mother was very distraught. You know, we sat her down, we tried to... So when, when I went in for the meeting and I, the first thing I wanted to say to the teacher was of everything that you could have noticed about that young child, you were preparing to transit from a nursery into, into your school, it was their hair, you know? Um, and I said, did you not think that there is a reason why the parents or the family do this? When the mother explained her work schedule, the father's work schedule and said, I can't have my child's hair looking very untidy. This is the easiest way and it was very nice. It was. It wasn't too long. It was. It was. It was. It was child appropriate, and it was appropriate for the school. Um. So when we had a meeting with the headmistress, she said, "You know what? We need to put this in the policy." Yeah. This was now added, and what they did, they looked at the child's hair and they said, "Okay, what they won't have is color." So there were specific colors, which was fine because, you know, shocking pink, that's not a no, that's a no, no. But, you know, the, this headmistress, she was amazing. She put it in the policy and she's, he, she realized she needed to cater to that specific ethnic group. OK, so you see, the point I'm trying to make is, yes, we do have to abide by what is there, but it's not everything that is there that we need to say, okay, we're swallowing it hook, line and sinker. That was why I asked the question earlier is about, is it the system that also has to learn as well as the family having to learn, you know? Cause I, I still think it's a, it's a two way street, you understand? But I hear what you're saying, Sister Debola, and, and thank you so much for that. Um, I hope we've answered this lady's um, statement. There's one more I'm going to take and that is, Somebody said, uh, just bear with me. Uh, that one's cut off. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. Cultural generation, cultural generation gaps are issues we need to address. Our kids in England today are very different in terms of upbringing. The church raises our children, uncles and aunties too, back home. Neighbors are most people in the environment too, back home. Whereas here it is different. All so we do not spare the rod in Africa, but here we do. The, these case studies being mentioned by Yemi are failings that are general and border on neglect on high level. Cultural differences are issues most families are failing to recognize, address, and use positively. Wow. Yeah, that's quite long, isn't it? So I think I'll break it down. So basically we've got here Cultural differences are issues most families are failing to recognize, address, and use positively. Okay. So Can is I that say what? something? Yes. yes, go on. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's cultural differences that families are not um, recognizing. I would say the individuality of the child Yes. and the individual characteristics is that every child is different exactly. and the way you would bring up one child is different from the way you bring up another exactly. we often have a term we use in social work called resilience every child has their own resilient factor yeah. and is different from one which is why typically when we go to a family and there's 
serious neglect issue while one child is suffering from it mm -hmm. another child is striving in the same environment yes and when you look at it you're wondering what makes that child strive and what makes that other child fail it's mm. just the resilient and yeah. the resilient could be something as simple as maybe a neighbor that is encouraging that child mm -hmm. maybe a teacher at school so i mean i wouldn't say that we have uh, we're not understanding the differences in culture. I think one of our greatest failing is lack of understanding of the individuality of a child. I mean, I grew up and I think that's still very, the, the thing is we're all victims of how we grew up, but we need to start questioning those values in terms of, you know, bless my mom. So she used to compare my brother to my next door neighbor, but my next door neighbor was, was a cannabis smoker, you know, <laughs> and she didn't know that. <laughs> but you know she would just say oh why can't you be like him and and that's the that's the problem is that often I mean even now in this culture I know I actually fell into it as well my uh, daughter went for the um Saturday um grammar school classes where there's a lot of us there one person tells the other we all want our children to go to grammar school but not every child is cut out for grammar school not every child is cut out for independent school. Some child would do very well in a comprehensive school and some would do well in an independent school. So, I mean, it's the la my take, and I think it's not the, uh, and that's my contribution, yeah. somebody else might have a different view, is that we're not recognizing the individuality of a child. And, and that's still the mistake that our parents made yeah. and we're still making the same mistakes. Spot that's, on, that's my... absolutely spot on. And this conversation was had today, funnily enough. Um, and you're right, you know, every child is different. You might have six kids and six of those children will have totally different personalities. That's what I have, a, I know of a family, they are 12 kids out of the 12. One is in prison, one is a doctor, one is a lawyer, one is a, so you can, can you see that the disparity, it's, it's, it's different and you are right. This was what our parents, there was that saying, um, your, your brother did it, you must do it. No, the fact that your brother did it doesn't mean you have to do it. Your brother is your brother and you are you. And that is the education I think that needs to go out. Um, and even in sometimes if you if you've had kids in school who are in the same schools and you might have a bit of a challenge with one and you go and meet the teacher and the first thing is, oh, yes, it's very surprising because his brother doesn't do that, you know. And the first thing I'll say is, well, yeah, because he's a different person, you know, and I think this as parents, you know, we we need to I love what you've picked up on Adibola. This is this is the thing. This is the thing. This is where this is where all I think this is where a lot of the challenging behavior we get from kids is coming from they don't want to be likened to a b c or d because in their minds they are unique they are them so when you're comparing so i mean if there are parents out there if there's anybody out there you know please guys this is an open forum we want to hear from you i know some of you have kids we know some of you probably have some of these issues um don't like we said you don't have to mention names we don't want names but please let, let's hear from some other voices lend your voices to this to this topic today it would be so amazing to hear other perspectives from maybe our nigerian family who is on here um how it how it how is it for you because it would be exciting to hear your take you know because we've been talking about obviously safeguarding um and child protection which is in the united kingdom um it would be nice to hear how you are managing the culture and the values in a, in, in, in a country that is now becoming very modernized. Yeah. Um, Nigeria today and Nigeria 50 years ago is definitely not the same. So you guys are probably playing catch up, but it would be lovely to hear from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw the floor open. Sanusi, you just unmuted. Were you trying to say something? Okay. Yes, yeah, someone. Uh, who is someone? Hello, someone. Okay. Jacqueline's got her hand up. I'm, I'm unmuting you, Jacqueline. 
Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good it's evening. great as always to be here. Um, I'm always learning. I seriously mean that. Um, and I want to thank you too for um, bringing up this topic today, because like you said, there are many parents on here and we're all learning. I would like to think that there are others learning as I am, but um, I'd like to quickly say, you know, like express my thoughts, like you've invited us to. Mm -hmm. Now there's something that I feel has become quite unpopular now that I still believe in. Um, and it comes to the matter of discipline. I think that somehow, especially in Nigeria, we're throwing away the baby with the bath water. When you talk about safeguarding children, I totally agree that we could do more. I mean, Yemi is witness to that. We are absolutely behind when it comes to safeguarding our children, especially in social environments like the school and you know other places. And um, the hope is we will get it right, especially with direction from people like you. Um, I'd like to think that you guys will come back and um, have another go um, at, you know, what you started here. Uh, I'm sure you're still doing that anyway. That's not to say you stop, but you know what I mean, to have um, Yemi come back and continue the work that she started. And of course, you guys, and uh, well, the whole management. Having said that, I think also that um, just like human beings are wont to do, we swing from one end to the other. And so for a lot of us, what I see is a lack of discipline. Uh, there was a time when we were growing up when you didn't have mm -hmm. to eye your child to stand up when an elderly person steps into a room where the chairs are not enough or to even simply greet. Now, because we, we keep talking about, you know, you have to let the, you know, this free range kind of parenting, um, that's what I see a lot of people interpreting safeguarding as. And I think that is also wrong. I agree with uh, Mrs. Ahmed, who talked about understanding your children for who they are. Stop comparing. Um, I think this is absolutely necessary. And I also agree on knowledge. We have to create awareness. It's quite interesting that just last week, I had a program and I think I'm just going to go ahead and forward that to you later. I think you should listen and hear what parents had to say. Mm -hmm. I decided to talk about learning difficulties last week. I'm talking uh, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, you know, just the whole range, um, dyspraxia, which is actually more like a group of it all. Anyway, bottom line is parents called in thanking us. They didn't know. And so, yes, sometimes human beings, I mean, when you don't know a thing, you begin to wonder why your child cannot simply measure up to her siblings. After all, they're from the same womb. And so you find frustrated parents thinking about everything under the sun other than what the problem is or what the challenge is. They would think, oh, they have come for this, my child. Um, oh, um, this child is play too playful. Um, I wonder why she drifts off daydreaming when you're trying to explain something to her or him. And so therefore I can bring that back with the king. And so I think it's no, no right thinking parent wants to hurt their child. Um, I would like to think parents want their children to excel because it's your pride. It's your, it's at the end of the day, what you feel is your uh, recompense, like your compensation for, for having raised upright individuals. So I, it, when we see parents doing that, a lot of it stems from ignorance. So I, I think what I'm just trying to say here um, are three major things. Um, thank you for the work you're doing. I think we need to create more awareness, especially in Africa. It, it, this, this, um, this challenge, this thing about the fact that we have learning difficulties that have nothing to do with the intellect of that child. 
As a matter of fact, while we were talking and I told people, do you realize that people like Albert Einstein, um, Richard Branson, I reeled out a number of names. And I said, do you know that these people have either dyslexia or something? I mean, people like that have actually been known to have even a higher IQ. Uh, you would listen to the program and hear how parents were saying, thank you. Thank you for letting us, but you know, at the end of the program, it was kind of frustrating because there was no avenue, no place for them to go. So parents were asking, where can I take my child to, to get them tested, to see if they have any one of these learning difficulties, because there's one that is always forgetting. There's one that is too playful. I didn't have any answers. Here's hoping that one day we will get there where these resources will be um, available for parents in a place like Nigeria, because it's simply not there. So I just, um, I think I've said all I need to say, but I, I, I also like, like what Marcia said, um, I don't know, I, I got confused about the culture and tradition, but um, I, I'd like to say that it isn't everything that our parents did that was wrong. No. Um, I see a lot of us and I think we, we, maybe we suffered for it, but largely, we turned out better than what I see a lot of today. And so I think it, it, it bears hmm. for us to delve into who we are, what we got from our parents and not totally throw it out, pick out the ones that work and then we can let go of those that were perpetrated by ignorance. They are ignorant. They're not being aware of something like this being a challenge, okay? So thank you once again. Awesome, awesome. It's always amazing to hear from you, Jacqueline, because you um you work so hard where you know where you are, and I know you 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 have a lot to give um, the community. So you know, thank you for what you do as well. Um, and you're right, you know, um, that there are so many <clears throat> people who, especially young people, who have a disability, but you know can still excel. And I think if you followed our March program, when we did um, Living um, um, Ability in Disabilities, that, that came out quite a lot. So um, thank you so much for that. Um, I just wanna to touch on something you said at the end, and you said, let's take what, we, what works and throw out what doesn't. And I'm just gonna say, let's not throw out what doesn't work because when we throw it out, it's going to go stay somewhere and it's going to find its way straight back. So what we do with what doesn't work is we take it and we sit down and we look at it and we look at this thing that's not working and we say, well, why aren't you working? And then we do something about it. And I'll tell you why. You see, our parents did amazing. They did because they did what they know. But was everything that they knew 100%? No, it wasn't, whether we like it or not, right? Now, you have families today where there is no engagement. You followed our program last week where we said we have fathers who are present, but they are not present, right? You have families today that we've got single mothers, we've got a lot of broken homes. Now, what are the triggers? What are the triggers of this? What are the triggers? The triggers possibly could stem from the internalization as young people who are being raised in that way. So we have to be really careful what we throw out there. Um, it doesn't for one second mean we are taking away what our parents did. Yeah, some of us turned out amazing, but guess what? There are some that didn't turn out amazing. And if they were to be on this forum and say their story, say their truth, you would see. So it, it, you know, it, it was amazing um, your your input there, Jacqueline. It was, but I'm I'm just gonna wanna hold on to that thing you're throwing away. Keep keep it. We'll work on it, you know. And that, that's what that's that's what saffron is about, you know. It's about not being scared to take that challenge and do something about it. But we can't do that on our own, and this is why we ask you to share these programs so that we can have people on this program who will be able to look at that thing you want to throw away somebody mm -hmm. on here might say Giz Yemi Marcia I can I can sort that out because that is what they're good at yeah so thank you once again um 
and I'm going to hand over to you now, Yemi. Um, just if you can do the connect for us, because obviously the, what we started with was how can we integrate the culture and the value into the safeguarding and child protection. So just before we close, you know, if you could just throw out a few nuggets that they can take away um, mm. that would help um, okay. in, in, the, in, the, in the linking of, of the two. Can I just Actually, pick I up, to say yeah, can I yeah, just pick ahead, up something from Jacqueline? Yeah. Jacqueline, you said something which was quite important. You said it's how some parents interpret. So when you um, give the example of a child going into a room where they're sitting down and there are older people coming and they don't stand up, that's what we instill in our children. It's not safeguarding. This is, a, this is natural manners, culture. This is not safeguarding. So this is you as a parent instilling in your child from very young respect. That's what we call respect. You know, there's one thing I did with my child, my children on the bus, and even now they still do it. When we're standing at the bus stop, we always let people go before us. You always let the older people go before us. I used to be so proud of my son. If he's sitting down, as soon as someone else comes on, he would stand up. This is what we instill in them rather than us taking safeguarding a bit too far. That's not, that's not safeguarding. And another thing is that our parents, they didn't do anything wrong. Mm -mm. They were doing what they knew. It's for us to educate them now that this doesn't carry on. And the majority of them have stopped. If you, as I said about our, their grandchildren, they don't do that with their grandchildren now. So yeah. I, you know, as, and also, as you said, it's also made us who we are today, but it doesn't mean we carry on that because we know better. We know what's different. We know there's another way where we can do it without having to instill these traditional things that we've done in the past, which was handed down to them. And um, I need to um, say to you as well, Jacqueline, thank you so much for the work you're doing out there. And it's, it's quite amazing that you had that discussion on, on your program. And this is something that we carried all through March. So yeah. it, keep up the good work as well. And we do appreciate what you do out there. Yeah, thank you, Mercia. You see, Jacqueline, what you did there, now that oh, is yeah. safeguarding. <laughs> yes, Ma yes, Jacqueline, we can hear. No, I was just thanking Marcia. Okay, okay. But really, um, what you're doing there, now that is safeguarding. That is part of the safeguarding agenda. And that also um, has brought me to the thought that um, we probably need to talk and do some safeguarding work around identifying um, organizations that work in Nigeria, um, either in Kaduna, where you're at, or maybe somewhere else um, who work um, around um, identifying or diagnosing um, um, learning learning children with learning difficulties. So if we and and that's a major aspect of safeguarding is partnerships. Is is us coming to you, coming to another organisation, others, and are coming together to put something in place that would help the the, the parents and the children ultimately, that is safeguarding. Um, well done, Jacqueline, thank you, thank you so much. You know, we, we only have love for you. Um, Jacqueline is the director for programs at Invicta Radio. She probably doesn't want to say, but so I will say, um, Invicta Radio in, in Kaduna, she does a lot of work and a lot of, and a couple of shows like this as well around um, health and well-being and, um, and families. So thank you, Jacqueline. Um, I know Michael wanted to say something. Okay. Michael, did you, you, you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? Uh, he's going to have to unmute. Let me ask him to unmute. Yeah, he had his hand up for a while. Yeah. Go ahead, Michael. I've asked you to unmute. It's not unmute. There you go. Are you on now? You can un I've asked you to unmute. You should be able to unmute now. 
There you yeah. go. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Michael. It's, nice, it's, nice it's, it's nice to be here um, tonight to share um, from the wealth of knowledge, you know, all the participants here got in stock. It's, it's really a great one. I have learned a lot. I have, I'm yet to have um, a child, but I'm so grateful that I have a be on this program. Um, I must um, contribute this um, to say that um, a lot of parents, a lot of parents need to understand that comparing um, a child to the, comparing one child to the other, it's a great pillar. It's a great pillar of um, confidence. It's a great pillar of self-esteem. It's a great pillar of a whole lot of um, 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 energy that needs to radiate within a child. Every child also needs. Um, every child also needs um, special support. If, you have, if the child is doing well, the child still needs support. So our confidence doesn't lead um, the child to, um, to to a bad end. Also, if the child isn't doing well, most especially, they also need it. But um, the behavior of a child, you know, from another angle which I'm looking at it from, the behavior of a child sometimes boils down to um, what I, I I may be wrong, I'll need you to probably make a research, um, someone to make a research on that as well, may have been transmitted in the gene because um, from one generation to another, it is known that we carry properties of our parents, our own properties, and these properties that are embedded in our genes, in our DNA, is transmitted to our children. And while dealing with these children, we also need to checkmate ourselves and know that, oh, is this child a replica of who I used to be? If this child is a replica, then how do I need to go about it? How do I need to manage the situation? That is why we have professionals in the house, you know, like you and, um, 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 and everyone who is out there. I, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. And I, I, I hope and strongly believe when I start raising my own kids, I will do wonderfully well, you know, learning so much from on this platform. I appreciate your good job. Good job. God bless you. God bless you. Good. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Michael. Thank you. I think I did put a hand up. Yeah, she has. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um yeah. Um I was going to uh, I want to lower my hand. Okay, yeah. I'm done here. <laughs> yeah. So um I was going to say something that came to mind, but before I do, I'm just going to touch on what um, Michael said there about um, some behaviors in the gene. There's what we call the difference between nature and nurture, and in terms of nature versus nurture, is when you know. Uh, but I think what we're fast learning is that sometimes, um, I mean, even from here in the United Kingdom, what we've seen that is evident is we're dealing with the, I mean, I had a child protection conference the other day and I had um, great grandmother, grandmother, no, great grandmother, grandmother, mother, and the child. And every one of them had from great grandmother 16, 16, 16, and we have a 16 year old at the pre-birth conference for the child. And what you will see that is very apparent is from great grandmother, obviously was the first one, from the grandmother, every one of them went through the care system and every one of them got support. One got adopted, adopted, broke down. So they're different. So there is that still struggle of what is it that we're getting wrong in terms of nature and nurture. Sometimes nature versus nurture, you can change the environment of the child, what's inherent and obviously we would still come for the child we go home at 16 and get involved in some of those things that you're trying to protect them from when they were younger so yeah we're still we've not really hit the nail on the head there and it's i have to say i see that that's still a struggle but yeah um you could change by changing the environment of a child by changing the care around the child you could change some of those inherent factors and i think you're right Sometimes we forget that we've been there. We've been a child before. Or, I mean, I my daughter thankfully 
doesn't watch this show. I was such a bad teenager, but I was so hard on her because I mean, I used to wear three or four layers of clothes so that when I get home, when my mom is, um, she's whooping me, the clothes will be the absorber of the cane. But then, <laughs> but then my demonstrations and my acrobatic demonstration would be like, oh, she's really beating me up and all of that. But actually it wasn't painful. It was just an acting role. Yeah, but she's not listening, so she won't hear that. <laughs> so yeah, I think we forget that very quickly. But the point I really wanted to make, so I wanted to touch on that very quickly. Thanks for raising that, Michael. But I wanted to also touch on the fact that there's when um, um, earlier when, um, I can't remember who was speaking, but there's a lot about modeling and we don't model enough good behaviors to our children to expect them. Children these days, we question you. Gone are the days when parents will tell their children, do as I say, not as I do. They will question you if you're not doing exactly that. So when my children were growing up, like Marcia was saying, if I enter the bus, I would be the first one to get up to show them that behavior. So they grew up understanding the respect. They see me going to see my aunties kneeling down on both knees. So they didn't dare not kneel down or go down. My son, my son quickly learned that he didn't need to kneel down and we taught him that he needed to prostrate. And he knows the difference between aunties and aunties. So, I mean, that's just how it is, is modeling. And I think we sometimes forget that, that children these days have so much in social media, TikTok, everything, that is informing them of what their rights are. So if you're not doing, and, and I think if parents are, are hypocrites, for instance, their children will challenge them. Some of the behaviors we're seeing in our children is a result of the fact that they're struggling against that structure that we're laying down because they know us for who we really are. You know, you can imagine a, 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 a father that is abusing a child, let's be honest, sexually, wants that child to respect them outside. That's not possible. And that's the things that we see sometimes that we are not really aware of is we need to be modeling those good behaviors. If you want the children to show good behavior, then let's model it. Let's stop, go. children will see their parents. I, once I had a young person that was in prison and was telling me, oh, he wanted to be a Muslim. I said, why? He said, because Christianity is full of hypocrisy because he used to see his mom gossip a lot about everyone all the sisters she was, or sister this, sister that, all the way home, it was gossiping about those people. So children pick on those things, it affects them. And, and, and that's why sometimes it affects even how they relate to us and how they show respect and how they're able to abide by behavior. Finally, one other thing I wanted to touch on was, you know, when we talk about the difference between children being brought up in the United Kingdom and children being brought up in, in Nigeria. Nigerian children have their own issues now. I'm not even, I'm, I'm sorry to say this. I had experience of, of hosting some children from Nigeria and they don't wash their plate because people do that for them. They don't, they don't know how to clean the toilet because people clean that for them. And I, I was really appalled that that happened. And I was like, how did it happen? How? You know, how did we lose that, yeah. Do you know, in terms of when we want to give the best to our children? So the, there are advantages and you find out that when people think that children are not behaving well in the United Kingdom, they send them back home, those children can get worse and some will do well and vice versa, the ones that they will send from Nigeria here, some will do well and some will not do so well. So I think what the major thing is, is parents need to pay attention. Children need attention. They need time, they need communication. They need to be told that they are loved. You know, we just don't expect you that you should know I love you. No, our children need to hear from us every day. But Michael, when you have girls, you need to be telling them before any boy start writing them love song, which used to happen in us in secondary school, when they will write lyrics from a song to you as a letter in it. And you know, there is a song <laughs> because when you're reading it, oh, that song, I know that song. So before anybody tells your daughter you love the lover, you need to be telling her, I love you. I'm your first prince charming. And we don't do that enough because we think giving our children every comfort that they have is love. No, they need to hear, I love you. Because part of what we have is we have a generation of young girls that are obviously at risk of exploitation because they're looking for love. And that's what I wanted to add. 
Wow, wow, wow. That was that was loaded, but that was amazing. That was amazing. Um, is there anybody else that has anything they have to say regarding this? Yeah, that was, um, regarding this topic. It would be nice to hear from you just before we close. Yeah, if there's anybody else that wants to lend their voice, Facebook family, have you got? I know you you guys have contributed. I want to know if Michael, your hand is up again. Okay, I'm coming to you now. Ask to unmute. Go ahead. Have you unmuted? All right, let's do it again. Yeah, you can unmute me now. Um, yeah. I, I I I have someone. I, I have someone here who has been who has been listening on the side. We've been listening on the side. Uh, okay. Is uh, Mrs. Ivy Douglas, my colleague at the office. I, I right. want to turn the camera to her. Sure, sure. Where you Go see, ahead. Um, she's been, just wave, just wave at, at the camera, please. Just wave at the camera. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. It's great to have she, you. She, she has the, the airport on. And um, she's been following all along. Right, her. right. Awesome. Awesome. So, oh, okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it would be nice thank for her you, to, to join. Thanks for that. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so if we have anybody else that has anything to say, we just want to, before we go, we would like to mention and recognize our mentor in the house this evening. And Tiama, good evening. It's lovely to have you on. I know you've been listening. Good evening and thank you very much. Thank you. For the acknowledgement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, over to you. Um, good evening, Antiyama. Thank you for joining us. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you too. Thank I you. love the opportunity to listen. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, there is something I wanted to throw across, um, and that this is um, to um, Deb, um, as it were, as well. Um, I know over the years I've had the same question, and including social workers have asked me, and I, I just want her to collaborate or whatever that word is. Um, where's she on? Oh, okay. Um, Parents, in this country, I know in Scotland, um, there is a law against parents uh, physically chastising their children. Um, in England, and I'm getting the, the, the four, the four um, nations right. In England, there isn't a law against a parent. Um, Discipline, I'm not going to use what discipline, disciplining their child uh, with, a, with, with regard to a parent smacking the child. Now, the issue is, and it's always been the question that we've had, and the, because the, the phrase says, with the, the measure in which you smack that child, my measure might not be the same measure as you. So if if I use my my palm to smack smack, it might be, well, it might not be. It might be more forceful than you you can. So the the issue is, what is that measure which which you raise your hand to smack a child? That measure, um, what sort of impact did you want to get? Is it a correction? Or you actually just wanted to inflict so much pain because your frustration comes into that measure. And then comes the question, do you really need to raise that hand anyways? Can't we find different ways um, to, to, to discipline our children? I'm going to put one, one more and then I'll give you an example. And um, as part of that, where we started to address alternative ways in which to, to discipline a child. The only thing also that you should not use in any way is an implement. So where we have the belt, we have the wooden spoon. If you were, you were in that same position, we have the horse. We have anything that can fly across the roof. <laughs> um, Please don't use them. You know, um, you using your palm 
and maybe on when we're not on the bare skin because when you go that that if you're if you're like me you will see that the, it'll come red if you're if you're a child that doesn't have such darker skin it might not so it it, it really depends on the force the skin do you break skin once you break skin with an implement or even with your palm that becomes a safeguarding issue that becomes harm now is it um i know we have gbh that's grievous body harm what's the other one the, the lesser sorry ladies abh abh aggravated is it actual actual thank actual you. bodily harm okay sir um yes so actual bodily harm and those are and me, I don't see the difference between the actual and the and the GBH. The whole thing actual, is actual is just the, oh, oh yeah, oh, no, yeah. I can understand it. I'm just saying that <laughs> even if you have actual or you have GBH, it is all harm. And so, oh. it, it just shouldn't be happening at all. So we need to look um at other um alternatives. My my younger son is not here, so I'll give an example. Well, he has he 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 really loves his PS4. We are at PS4 now, but when he had his PS3 on a Saturday morning, Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday, it was standard rule, not happening. But from Friday, I literally probably even vacate the living room because that is your space. It's you and and your and your PlayStation. But then he actually started sneaking in some of the days and after so many warnings <laughs> and and I will use frustration. One day I sat down and I waited till late. I literally sat there for a long time and I'm sure he was looking like I fell asleep and woke up. He was still there. I didn't say nothing. That was on a Thursday evening. And I'm sure he sat there thinking she's not saying anything. She's not saying anything. Yeah, I was waiting for my time. As soon as he shut it down and went upstairs, I asked my 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 cousin, I said, please pack that thing, everything, cables, everything, put it in a bag and put it where even I don't know where it is. Because if he begs small, I will I will I will feel I will feel sorry for him and he can have it. But no, that was it. And for three he woke up the next morning and then it's Friday. It's Friday, it's his day to start to play. Sat Friday, Saturday, Sunday, none. Hey, and it was just find something else to do with your life. And I had that PS for three months. For three months, I had that. And we, we found alternative things to do. Um, some of it was actually quite beneficial to him, to his learning. And then one and the Saturday, key, you didn't have to smack him. I didn't smack you didn't him. Use force. Oh you no, yeah. no. And on a Saturday morning, he woke up, and he was right there. If, if, if I'm sure it was like Christmas, I was in my Aww. bed, and I heard him shouting from downstairs, "Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. I'm doubling. I'm doubling. <laughs> you know what doubling means? It's like it's prostrating." I'm double laying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that has stuck with me for God knows how long. And I've used it so many times in training. Is that you need to find alternative ways to um to get your point across. Sit down one on one, and and talk, iron things out, discuss the things. Once I have found that once you sit down with children and you explain things to them. Like Debola said, and as everyone said here, they run with it. Once they can understand your point, that's it. The work's done. So let's take time and sit and have more discussions with our children, please. Let's listen to them a whole lot more. They have a lot more to say than, although, yes, they think Google knows everything, but when we actually do sit down and discuss with them, they find out that we've got some one or two things stored up there too. Uh -huh. Lovely evening. Can I quickly you. say something? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say to what Yemi said, there's too much at stake for parents and they need to know that. There's the job would go, Everything. the mortgage, 
debt would not be paid. Uh, the house would be repossessed. Mm -hmm. Finances would be more affected only because you weren't able to take the walk from that moment of madness. Because like you said, it is, and, and I think that's what we need, all need to acknowledge is that the smacking is not always the offense, it's more than the offense. There's a lot going on. There's probably something happening. There's, you know, emotional abuse, probably sometimes from partners that are sending them very bad texts and, you know, mm -hmm. they're dealing with that. They're dealing with pressure at work. There's a colleague that is obviously wanting to take their position and, and things are happening. So it's, it's a lot of pressure and then there's pressure from back home. So parents need to learn to walk away. I, I think it's very important point that Yemi made that there needs to be an alternative because there's too much at stake. Because I'll say that once the police are involved and they investigate and they find out that there's been something done to that child, regardless of what it is, that's the career going. And if you're working with children, and most professionals now need DBS. So even if you're not working directly with children, if you have GBH or ABH on your on your record, no one wants to work with you because you're a risk to yep, other yep, colleagues. Yep. So yep. you end up losing your job, you end up losing your livelihood. Too much is at stake. Parents do need to find an alternative because the, the, the system will take it quite seriously. If there's if and, and what we need to understand is my husband always says this to me. Obviously, sometimes when I when I smack him, he says, Oh my god, your hand is so painful. You've got the hand of a bricklayer. So I mean, we don't you don't know, and maybe it is because my hands are quite hard. <laughs> but the thing is, even if you're using your hand, you could have the bricklayer's hand like mine. You shouldn't slap anyone, you mm -hmm. cost them injury. Yeah. So really too much is at stake. Parents need to know there is an alternative. Walk away from it. Like Marcia said earlier, when you're in Rome, you behave like the Romans do. And in Rome, where we are, smacking, even though it's not, um, uh, obviously, it's still in, in, in Scotland. But the thing is, once an injury is caused, regardless of if you used an implement or not, or not. that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, um, Adebola. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you, everybody who has contributed. And just before we go, you know, we talk so much about physical beating. Um, I just want to throw out there, shouting at the kids too. Um, I tell you why that doesn't work, because when you're shouting, most of the time you're so high, they're not getting anything you're saying. And how many times have you been asked, why are you shouting, mom? And their voices are so low. And I don't know about you, but it makes me feel this small. Yeah. So let's and and, and listen, nobody's nobody's blaming anybody because I'm guilty. You know, I will shout from the top of the stairs. And the first thing I hear is, why am I? And then I have to ask myself, why am I shouting? You know, so what, what we need to do is we, it's hard, and parents. We're not knocking you, you guys, you're doing an amazing job. But as Adebola said, there is too much at stake. You've got to think you've come to this country, you've stayed all these years. Are you going to lose everything because you couldn't walk away from that moment? It's important, you know. I, honestly, I would, I would rather just leave my house for these kids and come back the next day than have an issue. Because sometimes the time you sit down and analyze what the issue is, it's like, was that all? It's, it's, some, it's nonsense. Yeah. So this is not us bashing you. You're all doing an amazing job. Um, I see why do you have your hand up? I'm going to take, give you one minute on the floor. How are you? Can you unmute yourself, please? Go ahead. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Please. I'm just coming out from our meetings this morning. Oh, that's okay. Oh, wow. We have to submit to the presidency. The <laughs> okay, don't season. worry, no problem. That's fine. It's nice to have you on. So maybe next week you can join. But that's absolutely. Yeah, please, fine. I have a question before you wrap this session. You go ahead. Are you telling us we should not beat our children? Nobody said Why that. Have you been? <laughs> okay. Listen, because this is beautiful. 
Yeah, what we can't do is we can't tell you how to raise your children. But what we what can else? tell you is that in the United Kingdom, because that's what we're talking about, if you were to do that and you cause any kind of physical harm, you would definitely be in trouble with the authorities. Okay, so at the end of the day, what it is, it's a learning curve. And I know you're speaking from Nigeria. And I'm telling you now, I know the Nigerian government is also working towards what we're working towards here. It might not be on the same level, but- We will not let you work. We it's fine. At the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you've got to weigh the options. Yeah? yeah if you would yeah. rather hit your child than bury your child, which nobody wants, you know, yeah. or would you rather speak to the child for the child to get understanding? Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah. that's fine. But we, we, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question you've asked, very valid. But what we would implore you back home is to promote, like we've been talking about, education and awareness and learning to speak to your child. You shouldn't have to beat your child for your child to listen. But once you are able to communicate with the child, you will find that they will learn a lot more. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I, thank you. I gained a lot in the short time I joined. Thank you. God okay, you. that's fine. I have one last question. I'm going to take a statement from Facebook, and it says, the education system will not accept hitting a child for discipline for cultural reasons. So parents need to find other ways. Thank you, Beverly. That was amazing. Um, just basically reiterating what we're saying here. The education system will not accept hitting a child for discipline for cultural reasons. So parents do need to find other ways. And that was what you said, Yemi, to round up. Yeah, sorry, can I, just, can I just say something to round up? I know we've we've looked at um, how it would affect the, the, the parents. It's the child that gets put into the system. You know, I think there's a, there's a shock of a child leaving the home, regardless of, um, you know, how how what the environment is there's yep. still that warmth of your own home you know and i know mm -hmm. that um with social care is taking that child out is the last thing possible the yeah. absolute last yeah. thing um and it's out of the, the the necessity um to do that but look at that child being removed from that environment and being put in somewhere where they don't have that you know that emotional um, support that that home 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 warmth and environment mm -hmm. it's even worse for, for the children as well so ultimately what we're saying is please let's educate ourselves more everything and most things we have said here is on the internet um it, I, 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 instead of i don't know i know i know some of us spend a lot of time on facebook but because that's our our office as well um but parents should take time to look into these policies. They are all over the internet. We'll pop a question, every question you've asked, put it on into Google. There will be a, a book, a document, a review, something that has been said and done on that. Please, 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 let's take time to um, continue to educate and update ourselves. And there's so many um, workshops that we put out so much training that we put out just go to a website go to our website or the website and look there is so much out there um for us as parents and for our children and for our communities thank you thank you thank you and i'm going to put it out there um saffron we do host our parenting hubs um it's going to be live again thank god no more well not no more covid but at least we're being allowed out so um second second saturday we will confirm we'll get back to you but it will be on our website our parenting classes will be um starting up again in may so look out for that and if you do know any parents that would require the service and um, we also have our feedback form um if you would it's an inquiry and feedback form you can always fill that in. If I'm going to ask um, if that can be dropped in the chat or, or on our Facebook page as well. Um, so there might be some parents who are not on the forum today or on Facebook, but definitely require the service. Please, please, please. The way we help, we're reaching out with the immigration hub. You know, we are doing amazing things for families and individuals is the same way 
we will be doing with the Parenting Hub, which we started before lockdown. Um, we made some headway, but thankfully we're back up and running again. So please spread the word. Um, it's very important that you know we we keep we keep our kids out of the system. Okay. Um, All right. Sorry. Quick quick mention. Sorry. Um, the immigration, the Home Office Immigration Hub, um, will not be happening this Saturday because rest in peace um, of the Duke's funeral that will be taking place on Saturday. Um, the Home Office um, Immigration Enforcement Team have um, had to give their excuses because they will be their civil servants and that's where their allegiance will be on, on Saturday. But the next one will be on the 15th of May. We will put the link, the dates and everything out. In the meantime, we'll also put that there's um, an email that you can still send inquiries to and it's very simple. It's just saffron at homeoffice.gov.uk. So that's saffron at homeoffice.gov.uk. Please put your questions in there and we will pick them all up um, pending the meeting on the 15th of April, May. On the 15th yeah. of May. Okay. okay. Brilliant. And just before we go, a last, last final announcement. Um, Saffron Development Global Foundation, which is our Nigerian arm of Saffron, we will be holding um, our first virtual um, roundtable discussion, which will be on the 25th of May, and it's a call to action. This will be um, done in Abuja. So um, the, the flyer will be out. Please spread the word, especially um, our Nigerian family. Saffron will be in Abuja on the 25th of May, it will be virtual, but that will be leading us up to our summit, which will take place physically in Lagos in July. So first, we're going to start in Abuja on the 25th of May with a virtual summit, which will be leading us to, I'm um, sorry, with a virtual round table, which will be leading us to our two day summit, which we will be holding in July. Um, details of both um, events will be shared on all our social media handles okay so at this juncture i want to say you guys have made me stay 27 minutes later than my time yes. i'm in a good mood so it's not a problem thank you all so so much for joining us it's been an, an amazing session very interactive but on a serious note guys please take away all the information all the nuggets you've heard and let's build our community let's keep our children out of the system because that's what this is about you know Parents work too hard to have their livelihoods taken away because of one mistake. One mistake too many. Too many. Um, enjoy yourselves. Have a good one. Be safe. I know we're all getting out there now, but please remember, we still have to stay safe. So um, Saffron wants to wish everybody an amazing rest of the week. And we shall see you next week, Wednesday, same time, same place. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye, Jacqueline. Thank Bye. you for joining Bye. us. Thank you, Wale, for joining us. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. God bless. Send us Thank you very much. Me. Thank you very much. Have a lovely Thank evening, everyone. You. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.